العرش بقدسه رمضان شهر عنت لجلاله الأزمان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting in this holy month and accept what we have been able to do so far and give us the tawfiq, inshallah, to take the best benefit from this month. One of the things that the month of Ramadan is well known for, and in fact it is the season for that, is the recitation of the Qur'an. Um, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says everything has a season. The season for the reciting of the Qur'an is the month of Ramadan. It is the month in which the Qur'an was revealed. It is as we have in the Qur'an, Shahru Ramadan, Alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. So it is closely linked to the revelation of the Qur'an and the recitation of the Qur'an is especially something that is recommended in this month. We are told, recite the Qur'an if you want God to speak to you directly. If you want to speak to God, then do dua. But if you want to listen to God speaking to you directly, recite the Qur'an. And in this particular month, it's just not recommended to recite Qur'an, but the, the Qur'an that you recite is very blessed. Remember, this is the month of Barakah. Everything is magnified. You are the guests of God. Everything Allah gives you more than He would give normally for those acts. So we have in Hadith, مَنْ قَرَعَ فِي شَهْرِ رَمَضَانَ آيَةً مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ Whoever recites one verse from the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan, فِي مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ كَانَ كَبَنْ خَتَمَ الْقُرْآنَ فِي غَيْرِهِ مِنَ الشُّهُورِ He is the same as if somebody finished the whole Qur'an. Finished the whole Qur'an in another month. Sometimes you say, really? So one ayah is equal to one Qur'an? Can that be true? Well, if you are asking someone normal for this thawab, that's one thing. For a reward, that's one thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does it make a difference? He can give everything he wants. If he says, for this thing that you do, I will reward you like this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's treasures do not deplete by giving. Right? He can give this. So, why should we not recite as much as we can in this month. In fact, in hadith we have that Imam Rada sallallahu alayhi used to have a habit in the month of Ramadan to recite 10 Jews every day. That means finishing the Quran in three, three days. 10 Jews. It means that he was reciting more than normal. And in this month, many of the ulama, they reduce their other work to try to say that this is a month in which there is something special. We should devote ourselves to this month and do the minimum that we can normally need to do about everything else just for this month so that we can engage in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this recitation of the Quran is another way to recite the Quran is with some tadabbur, some thinking. Uh, Abu Hamid Ghazali, he was asked, do you how often do you recite the Quran? And uh, he says, uh, there is one recitation that I finish every week of the Qur'an. And he said, there is one recitation of the Qur'an that I finish every month. And there is one recitation of the Qur'an that I finish every year. And there is one recitation of the Qur'an that I haven't finished. So what is he trying to say? He said that I finish the Qur'an in one week. There is another way I recite which I finish in one month. There is a third way I recite which takes me one year. And there is a fourth way I recite which I haven't finished. It means levels of tadabbur. Sometimes it is good to recite. Sometimes it is better to stop and think that what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trying to tell me here. You know, when you, when you look at Imam Radha sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, uh, people said that when we saw Imam al Radha reciting the Quran, we would see that whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, the Imam would say, Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik, silently. It's like he is interacting with the Quran. Allah says, Oh, you who believe. Imam says, I am the one, I, I'm here. You called me, I'm waiting, I'm listening. Or, for example, it was Imam's habit that when he recited Surah Tawheed, 
At the end of it, he would say, Kadhalikallahu Rabbi. This way is exactly how my Lord is. What this surah is describing him, Allah is like this. So it was a kind of interaction with the Quran. Or for example, the Imam, when he would hear about the punishment of hell, he would cry. And he would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him relief and security and sanctuary from these things. This is a kind of, if you like, interactive recitation. It's very good because Allah is talking to you. And when Allah is talking to you, imagine that there is a conversation happening. He is warning you of something. You get scared about that. He is tempting you with something. You show your raghba and your desire for it. And this is one way of reciting the Quran. In the month of Ramadan, we should take time out for this. That there should be a schedule that we keep, which is, allows us to recite the Quran in this way, whatever is possible. When we come to the Quran, though, what we are told is recite it without your previous ideas. Don't go to the Quran and say, I have an idea, and this verse now, how do I fit it to my idea? If you recite the Quran this way, then you don't get very much out of it because you are looking for vindication, justification of your idea, which you don't want to change. What you are told is go to the Quran without any idea and let the Quran shape you. If the Quran says this is how it is, then that is how you should take it, not what you understood before. So this is how we are supposed to do, recite the Quran. And then it has levels. The first level is, of course, to recite, to read. The second level is to try to understand. There are two kinds of understanding. There is an understanding that you should first try to achieve by seeing what is the Quran saying to me? What is it trying to guide me towards? And when you get confused, you go to the ulama to see what Aima Salam and ulama have said about this. But don't go first. They try to do tadabbur on this. And the most important stage is once you have done step one and step two, the next thing is to apply. It's not something like knowledge that you keep in your head just for the sake of knowing something. It is to apply. And when one applies, then the actual sababun nuzul of the Qur'an, the reason of revelation of the Qur'an was hidayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent it to guide human beings and we can get that guidance from there. It's better to get the guidance from the Qur'an and from anywhere else because this is the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this tawfiq. The other thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given many different reasons for reciting the Quran. One of them is that those problems we have in our hearts, those sadnesses, the grief, the sorrows, one of the ways to treat is, is with the Quran. Why? Because the Quran is not like medicine, but the Quran gives certain ideas, certain reassurances. It paints the, pic the bigger picture. So you realize, you know, that these things are for today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran would say, أَنَّهُ هُوَ أَذْحَكَ وَأَبْكَ That means what? Allah is the one who makes you laugh. So you will see days where you laugh in pure pleasure. And he also abka, and he will make you cry. You will see days which you will cry with bitter tears. And it's not that you will cry every day, and it's not that you will laugh every day. Some days are like, this is God's way. And when you reach this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Ya ayyuhan nas, qad ja'atkum maw'idhatum min rabbikum. O people who believe, a word has come, an advice has come to you from your Lord. Wa shifa'un lima fis sudur. It is a remedy and a cure for the ailments that are in your heart. So read the Quran. This dhikr that you have of God is where there is itminan of kalb. Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu al-kulu. So, Quran is, those, is a valuable, valuable asset. And inshallah, in the month of Ramadan, because we give more attention and we, we try to recite, maybe this habit will stay as well afterwards. This uns, uh, intimacy and familiarity with the Quran, when you realize, mashallah, many of the things I used to think about, here are the answers. God is talking about it here. Many of the things I was confused about, look at this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows the Quran to speak with us in this month of Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala, may we take that advantage to recite constantly even afterwards. 
Yesterday we spoke about some of the basiles that are muftirat and break the fasting. When we said that there were nine in total. We spoke about eating and drinking, sexual intimacy and masturbation. We talked about attributing lies to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the ma'sumin alayhi salam and what that meant. Today we finish the rest of them from those things that break the fast. One of the things that breaks the fast is if some sort of thick smoke, they call it ghubar, it comes into the throat and nose and uh, comes down the throat. Uh, it could be food, like maybe you're working in a place, like flour, uh, a lot of dust from the flour goes and you actually goes down your throat. It could be smoke, you're in a place where there is some, some smoke, uh, or you're behind a, a, a car that you know smoke is coming out of it and that smoke is going down your th the, uh, your throat and it's heavy it will break the fast so what you have to do is you suddenly you have to immediately avoid that you have to be mindful of that and go away from it and not be there uh, immersing one's head in the swimming pool or in the water uh, most of the fuqaha they have a rule that if you for example swim uh, and your body is immersed, but your head is not fully immersed, uh, but say half your head is immersed in there, that does not break your fast. It's only when you fully and consciously uh, dive in and move into the water that the fast can break. And the, the only exception to this is uh, the fatwa of Sayyid Sistani, and he says that he considers it makru shadid, to dip your whole head in, but does not break the fast. But all our other maraja kiram, they say that no, it does break the fast. So depending on the maraja, it's something that you need to think about and, uh, and apply. The other thing that is important is amongst things that break the fast is remaining in the state of janaba or haith for that matter or somebody who needs to have a ghusl. Right? Now you may decide that okay, I now require a ghusl before I can pray. But you decide not to do it straight away. So it is the night time and you say... You know that for the fa it's not just about Fajr Salat. Because for Fajr Salat, you may have an hour to pray. In normal days, you could wake up, do ghusl, and pray Fajr, even after the time of Fajr. But this is fasting. Fasting begins immediately at dawn. So you have to be careful that before the time of Fajr, you have done the ghusl. Now, somebody who purposely does not do so, purposely does not do so, that breaks his fast or the next day cannot fast. However, somebody who says that, okay, I definitely have every, uh, every intention to wake up before, so namaz, fajr time or fast time, say is three o'clock. You say, I am going to get up at 2.30, I have kept an alarm and this is my intention or I have told someone to wake me up at 2.30. If that person has made all these arrangements but does not get up for whatever reason, then they do the ghusl when they wake up and they can fast that day. It is only when you deliberately say, I am going to wake up without any other uh, arrangements. Inshallah, I will wake up. No, this is not enough. You have to make those arrangements. In them. So this is something that would break the fast. The other things that are mentioned is in all the books of fiqh is enema. Enema is to take from the back passage some, some treatment or whatever uh, and that breaks the fast. Sometimes it is for treatment, sometimes it is for cleansing or whatever. In the fasting it, it is not allowed. And the last one is vomiting. Now about vomiting, you have that it must be something that if it happens involuntarily, not something that you meant to do, it doesn't break the fast. Uh, or if it happens, uh, you, became, you made yourself sick, forgetting the Messiah or forgetting that you are fasting. So it was not purposely, it does not break the fast. But if you do it purposely, for whatever reason, you know, you make yourself sick or you, you, you're feeling queasy and you, you become sick, um, then it breaks the fast, right? So involuntarily, if you do it, there is no issue, but voluntarily, or without care of the Masail, that breaks the fast. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our amal in this month, inshallah ta'ala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.